Hi there. In this video, I'll show you how to create thematic maps in QGIS. A thematic map is a map that focuses on a specific, well, theme. It generally uses statistical or other data to explain a particular subject, such as population, economic data, or the spread of COVID, for example. Designers are often tasked with creating this type of map. There are two ways to create thematic maps. Using graphic software like Adobe Illustrator or Inkscape, start with a basic map of your area of interest and style the units, such as U.S. states, manually. If the reference material you have to work from is a chart or table of information, this is the easiest method. It's possible to convert that information into GIS data, but it's complicated and usually not worth the trouble. You can then create a key that corresponds to the data categories. Or you can use QGIS to automatically style the units according to the data. This method is only possible if you can find the right piece of data, usually a shapefile, that contains the attributes you need. QGIS calls this categorized data. It's also the most practical method if your map has a lot of areas, such as a map of the U.S. that shows every county. Since the first method is pretty straightforward, this video will focus on creating thematic maps using QGIS. The hardest part of creating a thematic map in QGIS is finding the data you need. Unlike common geographical data, thematic data is often available in text format, usually a CSV file. I'll have a future video about this topic, but it's complicated and hard to deal with, so I'll skip that for now. Sometimes you can find thematic data in shapefile format, which is simple to work with. For this video, we'll create a map of Florida showing COVID rates by county. I luckily found a shapefile with this information. There's a link to this file in the video description. Download it to follow along. I'll start by opening this file in QGIS. I get a map of Florida showing the counties. At this point, all of the counties are the same color. We need to look at the data to see if it contains the information we need. To do this, I'll right-click on the layer in the Layers palette and select Open Attribute Table. Here's what we see. Here's the tricky part. The county attribute is easy to see, but which attribute shows the number of COVID cases? If you're lucky, the site you got the data from might have some other information, such as a chart, table, or PDF that will help you identify which attribute in the table is the one you want. Look for this where you find the shapefile. If you're not so lucky, you have to figure out which attribute to use. For this map, there's an attribute called PUI's total, which looks like the total number of cases for that row. To the right of this is a bunch of columns with attributes broken into age ranges. To confirm my hunch, I added the numbers from the top row in the age columns. I can now assume that PUI's total is the second attribute I need. Since I know that PUI's total is the number of COVID cases in each county, it's a good idea to check the range from lowest to highest. To sort the table, I'll click on the PUI's total name at the top of its column. This will sort the data from highest to lowest. The lowest number is 297 cases, Glades County, and the highest is 162,933 cases, Dade County. All of the other counties have a number of total cases in between those two numbers. One more thing to check. Most datasets have one or more empty rows where an attribute is unknown or has a null value. These rows can distort the presentation of our map, so you'll need to delete them. To find them easily, I'll sort the data table by the first column, object ID 1. This data looks okay, but sometimes you'll see a few rows with the county name of unknown or something similar. If you see rows like that, delete them. Sometimes it takes a little effort to identify rows you don't want to include. Another version of this data I saw included a row of total numbers for the state. Since this is a map of COVID rates by county, that number would throw off the distribution of cases with an artificially high number. If you see data like that, delete those rows too. Now that our data is ready, we can use it to generate the map. Double click on the layer name to open the layer properties window. At the top where it says single symbol, set this to graduated. The value field is where we set the attribute we want to use for the sorting. 
In this case, that's PUI's total. Ignore the symbol and legend format options. The color ramp is the range of colors our map will use to represent the values from lowest to highest. To use a pre-made color ramp, click the little arrow at the right side of the ramp to see some choices and pick one. To create a custom color ramp, click anywhere on the ramp and pick the colors you want. I'll use a ramp from yellow to red. Once you've chosen a color ramp, click the classify button and you'll see this. If you click apply, you'll see these colors assigned to different counties based on their number of cases. We're not quite done yet. QGIS lets you control what kind of distribution to use for the data. The default is called Equal Count Quintile, which assigns an equal number of cases to each category. This usually isn't a very good way to organize the data. For this map, it makes the number of cases look really bad, since it forces the same number into each category, including the highest one. Let's try a different one. Equal interval gives each category the same size, a range of 32,000 from low to high, regardless of how many cases are in each one. Here's how that looks. That looks a lot less severe than the first one. Next, let's try natural breaks. I like that one, so I'll go with it. You might be thinking, how can you just pick one you like? Which is the correct one? It's easy. There is no correct one. As long as you include a key with the map to show what the different colors mean, you can use any method you want. This is ultimately a judgment call by you. Using different methods to display the data can easily bias the map in one direction or the other. It's up to you to decide how fair you want the map to be. Finally, we need to label the counties. Double click on the layer to open the layer properties window and click on the labels tab. Click on no labels at the top and select single labels. You'll see this. The value field is where we select the attribute we want to use for the labels. For this map, select county 1. Leave everything else alone and click apply. You'll see the map with labeled counties. Not bad. Let's go ahead and export this to an SVG file. Create a new print layout and add the map. We also need to add the legend to explain what the colors mean. QGIS can do this for you. After you've added the map to the print layout canvas, click on the Add Legend button on the left side and draw a box on a blank area of the canvas. You'll see the legend appear. Now you can export the file in whatever format you want. For maps like this, it's important to add a small line at the bottom to indicate the data source, where you got the data to make the map. That way, if anyone has an issue with the map, they can look up the source for themselves. Thanks for watching. See you next time.